So in case you don't remember who these two are, they're both relatives of Sophie. Jamie is her brother and Barney is her cousin. We see Jamie in the series 4 episode Sophie's Parents, in which new characters are introduced and someone has an inappropriate sexual encounter. Oh my god, you didn't! You fucked her! And we see Barney in the series 5 episode Spin War, in which new characters are introduced and someone has an inappropriate sexual encounter. Has he been sucking you off? No, of course not. Yes. Both of these characters are weird people. Jamie is a social outcast that likes Jeremy's music, seems naive and somewhat childlike, and is annoyingly clingy. Yes! Barney is also a social outcast that likes Jeremy's music, seems naive and somewhat childlike, and is annoyingly clingy. Now, from what I've said, you can probably get the point. These characters are very, very similar, to the point where you begin to wonder what the point of them even being two separate characters is. Just have Jamie be in both episodes, rather than having one episode each. So really, what is the deal with Jamie and Barney? Here's where you'd probably expect me to bring up some random offhand line of dialogue from three series earlier or something that would somehow explain why having these two characters both appear was necessary and foreshadowed and is an example of great writing. Good. Mmm, very good. But that's not going to happen. See, on this show I like to try and stick to in-universe explanations for questions like this as it's normally a lot more interesting to think about. But in this instance, we're going to have to break the fourth wall. Look at my jeans. (laughs) This is Joe Van Moyland, or perhaps Joseph Anthony Bernays, or Joe Lean, maybe. It's one of those three. He's the guy that played Jamie. As well as being an actor, he's also a musician, specifically a drummer. He was the front man of a band whose name was genuinely Joe Lean and the Jing Jang Jong. Hello, this is Jolene. I'm Dominic from Jolene and the Jing Jang Jong. But more importantly, he was the drummer of instantly forgettable band The Pipettes, who enjoyed minor success in the mid 2000s. More specifically, around 2007. And this time frame is important. The episode he appeared in, Sophie's Parents, first aired on the 13th of April 2007. So production for this series probably ran from some point in 2006 to possibly early 2007. Right before the time in which the pipettes were about to hit their peak. So Joe was probably not swamped under just yet. From looking at the original air dates of the next series, the one that Barney features in, we can probably assume that Series 5's production took place from mid to late 2007 to early 2008. This was a big time for Joe Van, whatever his name is, as in this time frame he played at the Pyramid Stage at Glastonbury, then promptly left the pipettes, formed that Jing Jang Jong band, and released that band's first single in October. So suffice to say, he was definitely a busy man around this time, and it just so happened to coincide with the period of time in which he'd have to film Peep Show. So I guess he weighed up the two options and decided to focus on the music rather than the acting, and thus Peep Show lost Jamie. It's part of life, isn't it? Loving music, so I think it's got far greater depth than something, you know, it's about being best or... Now, this leaves the production of Peep Show in a sticky situation. The scripts were probably written way in advance of Joe making this decision, and he probably was originally intended to be in the Series 5 episode, but following the news that he was unavailable, they had to change the script to introduce this new character, Barney, so that the episode would still make sense. There are a few hints that Barney was a slapdash addition, like how in the episode in which Jamie appears in, Mark and Jeremy watch Sophie's dad, Ian, burn down a man named Dan Walker's barn, to which Jeremy says, Yeah, take that, Barney! Which I imagine is where they took the name from. Also, despite Barney saying he was at the wedding, neither Mark nor Jeremy seem to know who he is and don't remember seeing him there, which could be a bit of fourth wall breaking humour, as this is the same reaction the viewers would have, because he genuinely was not at the wedding episode. His character didn't even exist yet. Though I should note that the guy that played Jamie, Joe Van Moylan, didn't quit acting altogether. It was just an unfortunate timing with his music and acting careers. He was even in another show written by Peep Show writers Sam Bain and Jesse Armstrong, that being Fresh Meat, which also features Robert Webb. This is just one of those weird situations that you have to deal with when making a long-running TV show, and I think they did a pretty good job with a replacement. Jamie's kind of a forgettable character anyway, as far as one-time appearance characters go anyway, and he didn't have much screen time, so it's not a massive deal. And luckily this didn't set a precedent for the rest of the show's lifespan. I mean, could you really imagine anyone else playing characters like Mark or Jeremy? Oh, 